Oh, hey there. I was just about to do a rig check. You want to join me? Come on. Oh, hey there. I was just about to start the rig check. Why don't you come on over in this seat? Join me for a bit. Welcome to Franklin's 3193. So first thing we're going to do, shut the door to stop that. And we're going to turn it on for a little bit. We're going to check our fuel. We're full, so we hit the radio on. We check our starting mileage for the night. Our mileage is 65,767. So 65,767.5. Ship times are 1,800, because we go by military time, to 06. Let's just see if the uh, megaphone's working today. Hello? It works. It works. <laughs> we can move this back now. We're going to pull this puppy out so we can get into a better view. Back up camera just in case. Jesus, they were so close. All right, so now that we're out, don't mind that oxygen's a bit low. Now that we're out, we're gonna test the emergency lights by hitting the emergency master button, which will turn on all the lights. And then this is controls our air horn, and then our sirens. Now, shit, really? That's not for us. Okay, <laughs> if you wanna hop out, you can get a better view of it. almost forgot you were here. Why don't we check the outside of the ambulance to see all the carrying equipment that we have. Come on. In our first door, we have the stair chair, which is used to take patients who are conscious up or down stairs. It's much easier than the stretcher. We also have an extra thing of sheets and a flashlight for those risky nights. Let's move on. Here we got our random assortment. We've got our safety helmet for when we're doing calls on the road. Like, you know, I don't know, car accidents, all that fun stuff. We have a set of irons with an ax and a pick iron. Usually we don't use those, mostly firemen use that. They usually just do electrification. We've got our case of waters. we got our flotation devices for water rescues, which we don't do. That's fire again. <laughs> That's fun. Let's move on. Back here we have, it's a little tight squeeze, don't mind us. Back here we got all our bandages, our accoutrement, if you will, our triangle bandages, cravats, also known as. Here we got our stiff neck bag, which are C collars. We got an adult here and a kid. You can tell the difference. Very nice. That's to keep neck support, head stabilization, if you will. And then we have our KED, which is a, a Kendrick extrication device. It's used to take people out of car accidents. Rarely used, because we only use it if we have a lot of time, which usually we don't. Squeeze through here. <laughs> now we're gonna come over here to this door. This one's gonna be tight for you. This is where we keep our main oxygen tank. We're gonna turn it on so we can check the level. As we see there, it's 2,000. That's a full tank. That's a good tank. Good girl. Here we have a scoop stretcher, which will come apart, and uh, so we can go underneath patients. Uh, we don't want to roll 
maybe like a dislocated hip or something like that when you use this. It's pretty painful if it's a hip, but it's what you gotta do. We have our regular backboards with straps. These are the good straps. They're, not, they're the quick clip straps instead of the spider straps, which in my professional opinion are useless. We got a spare. We also have our Reeves, which unfolds into, <clears throat> kind, of, kind of looks like an old school stretcher that you used to see them like running like that and carrying them around. It's got solid wood beams in it so that uh, we got support. Let me see if I can close this without hitting my leg. All right, that's the outside of the ambulance. Huh, I just wanted to show you what it looks like when a patient's rolling up to the ambulance up to hop in it. When they know their safety is in my hands. <laughs> I'll well show you more. Come on in. Have a seat wherever you'd like. Welcome to my office. Now, what we have here is our mod device. This is where all our choices come from, if you will. We got our heat menu, our main menu, our time menu, which never touch. Don't ever touch that. I shouldn't have even touched it. We have our inverter, which doesn't work anymore. And we have our suction as the power goes out. <laughs> This is the suction button. That'll turn on the main suction unit of the ambulance. It seems to be in working order. What is that used for? That is used for, say we're doing CPR, or our patient's unconscious, and they have a bit of fluid coming out from their mouth and or nostrils. What we're going to do is we're going to take our yank hour tip, which is a hard plastic tip, and we're going to put it as far back as we can see. That's all the place you want to go. We're going to cover the, th the hole, and we're going to suction out in a figure eight motion to get up all that fluid. Could be blood, could be vomitus, could be spittle, doesn't matter. That has to go. These are our oxygen valves. Left to turn on, right to turn off. It has gauges on here. 15 is the top one. If somebody's really unconscious, we're going to turn that all the way up to 15. We usually keep it at 14, because that we can measure. You're going to hear it beep for low oxygen because I had turned off the oxygen. So let's just drain the oxygen so we don't have a bomb. Let us see the oxygen. Come on. Quicker, 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 quicker. It's going to beep in three, two, one. I was wrong! Okay. What we have over here in this handy dam. There's the beep. In this handy dam cabinet opens like this, which is fun. We got our adult nasal cannulas. It's not a nasal cannula. Where's my cannulas? Did they really lose all the cannulas and all these other uh, suction tubes? These are no longer the cannulas! These are our French tip catheters. These are used for suction. You can't really see them. More French tip to the thicker gauge. And these are the yank hour tips I was telling you about. It's kind of hard to see because it's clear. But this goes on the end, this part goes in the mouth, and that's how you suction out. Chunks don't really come through, it's mostly for fluid. For chunks, we're just going to use the original tubing, which is that. That's how the yank hour tip will go to the suction unit with one of these. That can kick, pick up chunks. All of it will get stored in the little canister and we'll get rid of it. Here we have our adult non-rebreathers. These are, of course, your face masks. They're non-rebreathers because, as you can assume, you don't rebreathe your air, your own air. Yay. We have our nasal cannulas. Found them. 
This is what you usually see when somebody's at home with their oxygen and it goes into their nose and up and around their ears. That's what these are. Those are usually used for someone who doesn't really have that much difficulty breathing, but we want to give them oxygen just to be safe. We have our sterile water. We also have our sodium chloride. Tears. Baby tears. Here we have our BVMs, also known as a bag valve mask. You use these for CPR. If anybody's a lifeguard, you've seen these before. It's got the CPR mask on it. We have two adult ones, just in case. Now, let's move on. Here we have our backup board for CPR. Now, we call this for CPR board for short, or just the board. Um, what this is used for, I'll take it out, is when we're doing CPR in the ambulance, we don't want to do compressions on the stretcher because the stretcher flexes. So what we do is we put this under their back, which gives them the open airway by putting their head a little bit lower than their spine, and then we have something sturdy to do compressions on. You can also fill it with water, fill it with sand so it's really heavy so it won't slide out. But then it's a pain to get in out of the, in out of the drawer. Here we got our extra sheets, towels, and on this side we got all our blankets. These are hospital blankets, so they are not comfortable at all. In this, we have all our tape, our gauze, our SAM splints used for like broken arms. These are amazing. I love them to death. I showed you, that's the door that we came in from the outside. So down here is where we got our CAD and our C collars. If we step over here, don't ever step over a patient, that's a fun fact. We have our OB kits. These are mother I'm sorry. I didn't want that to happen again. Back to where we were. These are our OB kits. This is what's used for giving birth. <sighs> I remember what OB kit stands for. It's obstetrics, which is birth. Always fun. Over here we have all the stuff on the other side, but for our kids. We have our child counter breathers, nasal cannulas, child BVM, and an infant BVM, as you see the size difference, infants much smaller because they have smaller lungs. We also have a PD bear. Yes, it's called a PD bear. What this is used for is this is used for pass by oxygen for an infant. That's not part of it. What this does is the oxygen will go into the back and blow out the front because babies don't like stuff on their face. So if you give them this to hold, it'll just blast oxygen into their mouth or their nose. That is a great idea. And they have something to cuddle on and it's Aww. So you have a dog too. <laughs> but we don't ever pick up dogs. Come on. Okay. Now, if you'll step back carefully. Right here we have ice packs, heat packs. And on the bottom, our fire extinguisher, if we're feeling like firemen. <laughs> Foundation savers, that's what we call them. Over here, we have our BP cuff kit. Now this has multi-cuffs, so we have in here. I'm not gonna take it apart because it's a pain to fix. We have a large, a small, there's an infant down there and then a thigh. That's if, say, you have a woman who had breast cancer and had both of her breasts removed. You can no longer do blood pressures on arms on the sides where breasts are removed. So, you have to take a thigh. Um, say somebody has going through dialysis, they had kidney failure. Um, they're gonna, you can't, they're gonna have a fistula in their arm, which is when they sew to, uh, sew the artery and the vein together to make it larger pretty awesome. It puffs up, but you can't do blood pressure on that because it could cause it to explode. 
in their arm, which most definitely can. So you don't want to do it on that side either. Here we have a PD mate, which is a child seat for the stretcher. If I take it out though, it's going to take forever to put back together. We have our masks. We got these mostly for Ebola, which didn't happen. <laughs> We got our safety goggles, which none of us wear because we own our own and they don't look ridiculous. They're just glasses. These are pointless. Maybe chem class. If you want to go to chem class, you need goggles, you call me. I'll drop that off. Back here in the secret compartment, we have our triage tags. Now these look pretty gruesome if you look at what they say. These are for MCIs, say, bus crash, something like that, and we have a lot of patients. You're going to draw onto their body, there's images of the body, what they have, like where the injuries are, and then you're going to give them a quick over. If they can walk out, they're going to be green. They're minor. They can just leave. Well, they can't leave, but they can just walk out. Delayed means they need assistance leaving, but their condition's not too bad. Red means they need immediate help, and black is if they're dead on arrival. It's awful, but that's what it is. If any of you want to become EMTs, you'll learn more about these. These are actually pretty fun. Not in real life, though. And they're actually really, 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 really scary. All right, here we have our captain's chair. The throne, if you will. This is where whoever's doing breathing will be positioned. Get to that seat. <laughs> so he'll be doing breathing, or if he's just doing paperwork, a mom will sit here, maybe a friend, someone, a witness. So if the patient is unconscious, we can ask them what happened. It has full 360 degree turning radius, so they can look out the front, they can look out the door, they can slam into place, it goes back and forth, just like that. It also, if you got a kid with you, has a nice child seat, fully equipped. And then what you would do is you would lift this up real quick like that, slide this through. So it holds this down. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry, whatever. Okay. And that's the PDC. Over here, this bench is known as the medic bench, the paramedic bench, the paramissile bench. That's a fun joke. We call them that because if they're not wearing their seatbelts and we get into an accident, there are a missile through the windshield. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I hope to never see it. I hear it's hilarious. This can also be used in that MCI I was talking about before because it has multiple seat belts, kind of like the stretcher does, to strap them in. So you'd put a backboard on them, you put their head this way, have the backboard in, you can go over and there should be right there. Right here, let me get it for you. I oh, got you. you. No, I got, I got no, you. let me get it. All right. And then you got them in and it locks and that'll keep them there so they can't slide off the bench. See, I, knew, I thought I knew you needed help. All right. I don't need help. I'm an independent woman. This is our secret oxygen hatch. So we can turn on our oxygen from in here. Never step over the patient. There you go, someone's learning. Oxygen's in here. There's the door from outside. All fun and games. We have our hidden whiteboard here for the medics. They need to write down blood pressure, allergies, whatever. They don't have uh, handy dandy sheets or sometimes iPads. Sparta has iPads. Um, so every time they need to call the doctor to make sure they can use medicine, they'll write everything on that board. We have our portable suction unit up here. We need to go into the building, bring this. That's sucking. Sucks pretty hard. That's good. Doesn't have a new battery yet. And that's in. Watch your mouth. Over here. We got all the fun. Multi-trauma multi -trauma dressings here. These are used for like severe, severe injuries. We really need it. We got our AED. If you're at first aid, you guys know what this is for. This is our defibrillator, if you will. With extra pads and PD pads in here, we have our burn dressings. Now, these are rarely opened. Um, but pretty much it's the same thing as the multi-trauma bags, except these are fully sterile. They're never opened, nothing like that. So they're good for burns. Right here we have our trauma bag. This is what we're gonna bring out on car accidents. 
This has more multi-trauma dressings, more burn dressings. It's a load of gauze. It's a load of um, bacitrate, back, back tracing. Sorry, someone corrected me on that the other week. So we'll bring this. It's rarely used. Um, car accidents aren't as all the hype as you get. Pretty much when you're on EMS, you're mostly just going to get old people fall down. Go boom, boom. That's it. Then right here, we have our Unimed bag, also known as a jump kit or jump bag. When we're checking it, we'll throw it on the stretcher. What this has in it over here, I believe, if I remember correctly, because usually I just open them all, we're going to have the green pouch, which is our spare blood pressure cuff, and a spare stethoscope. I like my stethoscope because my stethoscope is awesome. It's only a single bell Littman. You can hear a baby crying from a mile away. Okay, in our orange, we have our cravat spare tube of glucose. It's used for diabetics. Cravats mostly are used for like slings or to tie down a combative patient. Just tie them to here. And in the blue one? In the blue one, we got our cold and hot packs. Uh -huh, cool. In the yellow, we have uh, one, I believe it's one sterile water and one saline. You're darn tootin'. You're darn tootin'. Then in our red, now if we remember red with red, that would mean this would be a trauma bag. You're right, here are the multi-trauma dressings. This is one sterile one, these are huge. And they work a lot. Some roll gauze, some regular gauze, pen lights, shears to cut off clothes, and skin, and tendons, and murder. And then we go in here, and this is where we keep our portable oxygen. BBM, couple tips, masks, and here's my baby. Think about oxygen, you never want to let it stand on its own. You never want to, you can lay it on its own to put it down, but you never want to stand it up. I'm going to turn this on. Now if it starts leaking, don't worry, because I'll fix it, but it shouldn't, because we fixed it on Tuesday. A little bit of a leak. So we went out again. So that turns it on, as we see. 2000 again. I'm going to close it and drain it. So there's nothing in here because if that gets slammed while it's on, it's a very bad thing. So we're going to rest it back in there. And that is that. Now we're going to go out the back and we're going to check the stretcher, make sure all the working parts work. Because if we get there and that doesn't work, no fun. And then we gotta carry them on our shoulders. Okay, we're gonna go out the back. This is our stretcher. We have Inferno. We also have a company called Striker. That's the most pot, famous one. It's kind of yellow. You'll see, you'll see it if you ever get hurt. <laughs> so this is how you unlock it. You're gonna push that. The stretcher comes out. Most of them will stick. Ours don't. We don't need them to. Pull this out. All the way, there'll be a bar that'll lock it. There it is, so we can't fall out. Usually you have your partner get the wheels, but it'll teach you a different trick. Put the wheels down. There's a black handle over here, which releases the wheels. Then you're just going to pull up, pull the way. The wheels will come down, you release that. You're on the ground. Come over here, there's a red handle. Red always means something happens. That will release the bar. And then the stretcher comes out. We got this handy button right here, down here. It'll raise that. This bar will lower that if you need to go to an elevator so that you don't have too much space. Most of the time though, that stays open. Okay, these go down so the patient can get on. This is our oxygen tank holder. Usually we'll just put it between their legs and then have them hold it here. There is a do-it-yourself handle on the side here, underneath. This is a release for the stretcher, so you can pull it up and lower it on your own. That's fully down. We're going to find that handle again. Just so you know, these are like 200 pounds. 
I hurt my back. Then going back in the stretcher. We're gonna bring it up. You have to raise up the bar. Oh, I don't though. This one I forgot rotates back, so you don't have to. So you can just push it straight in. Make sure it's locked like that. Usually you lift it up, and your partner would put the wheels up for you. But like I said, we don't have a partner. So we're gonna pull back, lift up, release the wheels, drop the whole stretcher down on the wheels, let them fully drop, let go of the latch, lift it up, push in, and. Ready for the road. Well, that's Walco Valley Sandwich. I hope you had a great time with us today. I know I did. Come back again soon and we'll learn more. Have a great day.